Once upon a time, there was a troll. But not just any kind of troll, but a devil troll. The devil troll crafted a magic mirror that distorts everything it reflects, making the bad parts of you look even worse, and everything you love hateful and ugly. Brilliant work, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Now I'm going to have seven years bad luck. It was worse than seven years bad luck, because those cursed splinters of glass were blown by the wind all over the world. And when a splinter of glass enters someone's eye, it travels to the heart, freezing it like ice, Ooh. making their eyes like the troll mirror seeing only the bad and ugly in everything and everyone. But that's just the beginning of the story. There lived a boy named Kai and a girl named Gerda. They lived next door to each other and have been best friends all their lives. Planting roses with you is my favorite thing to do, Gerda. Really, Kai? I thought eating Abelskyver was your favorite thing to do. <laughs> right, that too. But whatever you're doing, that's my favorite thing to do too. Children, I baked some fresh Abelskyver. Come on inside. You can never have too much Abelskyver. While the children enjoyed tea and Abelskyver, Kai's grandmother told them the tale of the evil Snow Queen who ruled over winter with a frozen fist and loved to kidnap bad children, forcing them to do chores around her icy palace. The following winter, Kai was sure he saw the Snow Queen through his window, beckoning him to join her. But then, a splinter of glass from the Devil Troll's evil broken mirror blew into Kai's eye. Good morning, Kai. Look, I made the first snowman of winter. Kai, why did you do that? Because it was stupid and ugly, just like you. Just like the others, the glass splinters has turned Kai cruel and aggressive. Move out of my way! You're a terrible slatter! Your mother is ugly, and so are you! Uh. Hello, little man. Are you hurt? Watch where you're going! I like your spirit. Perhaps I can give you a kiss to keep you warm. Who wants to kiss you, you old hag? You've been influenced by a shard from the troll's broken mirror. She kisses him twice, once on his cheek to numb him from the cold, and the second on his forehead to make him forget about Gerda and his family. But she withholds a third kiss, as a third kiss would kill the boy. Now, my young friend, come join me in my warm coach. We have a long journey ahead of us. Kai never came home. And although Gerda was heartbroken by her friend's awful behavior, she was worried about him. So, carrying a basket of his grandmother's albuskyver, she searched for him. That's when she spotted his sled sticking out of the river. Oh, river, 
Tell me if my friend Kai is alive. If you return my shoes, I know Kai lives. If you keep my shoes, I will know that he drowned. <gasps> that means Kai's alive and I'm going to find him. Maybe that palace down river belongs to the Snow Queen. But when Gerda arrived at the palace door, she discovered that it wasn't the Snow Queen's palace. And it would appear that the occupants have been inflicted with the cursed troll glass splinters. I don't care about your friend. If I let you take our royal coach and bay our reindeer, will you go away? Mm-hmm. While traveling in the royal coach pulled by Bay, Gerda befriends a little robber girl. Well, maybe befriends isn't the right word. Oi! Kid! Step out of the coach and give me all your gold and nobody's getting hurt! I don't have any gold. Those red shoes look sweet. How about I take them off your hands? Uh, I mean feet. Oh, I need them. I can't go barefoot. Welcome to my world, kid. But I'm on a quest to find my best friend Kai. Have you seen him? Might have. I'll tell you where he went. But give me them shoes. Guess that's fair. I spotted him with the Snow Queen. Headed to Lapland. The Snow Queen? I, I thought she was just a story. Oh, no. She's real, all right. I know how to get to Lapland. Uh, you're a talking reindeer? Why haven't you spoken before? I didn't have anything to say. To Lapland! Yee-haw! So, Gerda rode Bay for hours until they finally reached Lapland and the home of a mysterious sorcerer. Over tea and Dalbeskyver, of course, the sorcerer tells Gerda about the Snow Queen and her magic powers. Oh, you're a sorcerer. Can you grant me a spell to defeat the Snow Queen? Sorry, no, I cannot. Gerda feels suddenly afraid and helpless. Don't you see? You cannot receive any power greater than what you have now which is your own pure and innocent heart. And with directions from the sorcerer, Gerda and Bay set off for the Snow Queen's palace. Halt! Who goes there? Hello, my name is Gerda. I'm here to see the Snow Queen. Right, you got an appointment then. Oh, uh, no, but this is rather urgent. Listen, love, the Snow Queen is a very busy woman, yeah? Nobody sees her without no appointment. Who likes Able Skyver? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I, I do. do, I do, I do, I do. I do. I hate doing the washing up. Stop your whinging. Psst! Kai! Who are you? It's me, your best friend Gerda. You still don't recognize me? Ew! No way! I'm your best friend and I'm here to rescue you. Now come on! Tisk tisk. Are you here to rescue your friend? Not a chance! I will kiss your precious friend a third time and he will die. Gerda remembers what the sorcerer told her. You cannot receive any power greater than what you have now, which is your own pure and innocent heart. Kai bursts into tears. 
which dislodges the splinter from his eye and defrosts his cold, cold heart. But she's not angry anymore. And just like her palace melting around her, the iciness of her own frozen heart is melting as well. I'm free. My heart isn't made of ice anymore. I'm so grateful to you for warming the love in my heart with your own. Goodbye, children. Goodbye. And so, remember, the best way to thaw a cold, cold heart is a warm heart filled with love. I don't know what Albuskyver is, but it sure is scrumptious. Once upon a time, there was a quaint village, populated by quaint people going about their quaint business. But at the edge of the village, there was an imposing castle that was owned by a wealthy and reclusive giant. Boy, look at that castle. Can you believe that thing? So big and posh, like it's thumbing its posh nose at our little buildings. No one has seen the giant in seven years because he's traveling across the kingdom. But hidden behind the castle gates was a lush and beautiful garden. It was elegant and well tended with peach trees, thick grass, tasteful statuary, and lovely fragrant flowers. It was like Eden. And every afternoon after school, children would sneak into the garden and play in its lush grounds. They loved it very much. Until one day, the castle giant returned from his seven-year sojourn. And he was quite displeased to see the little trespassers. I'm gone for just seven years to visit my friend, Carl the Cornish Ogre, and I come home to this. Trespassers in my precious garden. <coughs> That's right. You better run, you little menaces. Lucky for you lot that I'm not too jet lagged to chase ya. Remembering he still had the football, the giant threw it over his garden wall. He could have easily destroyed the ball. Instead, he sent it back to the children. Perhaps he was motivated by something inside him that he didn't understand yet. One day, when the giant had tea... Perfect morning to have tea all by myself. <laughs> ah! The children returned, and the giant was none too happy about it. Sorry, Mr. Giant, but could we please have our ball back? Here you go, children! Now get out! Get out! Get out! The giant had enough of the juvenile trespassers on his property, so he took drastic action. What you're doing is cruel. The children love your garden and they have nowhere else good to play. I'm under no obligation to let anyone on my property, let alone a pack of wild, undisciplined, sniffling little brats. How dare you say that? You know what you are. You are a sad, lonely, selfish giant. <laughs> And that's that. 
And since that day, the giant wasn't bothered by children violating his peace and quiet again. He lived happily ever after. The end. Uh, no, no, wait! That's a terrible ending. There's more to this story. Although the giant was indeed selfish, he was also truly sad and lonely. He just didn't realize it yet. And the year unfolded in his garden with no intruders. Spring to summer, summer to autumn, and autumn to winter. But when spring returned, the giant noticed something unusual. His garden was still covered in snow. While it was spring everywhere else, somehow it was still winter in his garden. The giant wondered how this could be. Then another ball flies over the wall and into the snowy garden. A boy manages to squeeze through the bars of the gate to retrieve it. Why is there snow here? While the giant hid from the boy, he noticed something quite remarkable. The snow was melting where the boy walked and flowers sprouted and bloomed. The small boy saw that his football was stuck in a very tall tree. He tried to climb it, but he was just too small for the task. As the giant watched the boy struggle to get the football out of the tree, he realized something. Spring was returning to his garden. And the giant wondered if the children playing in his garden had something to do with it. Everybody, come back. My garden is open to all. Hey, that dangerous, selfish giant is trying to lure the kids into the garden! Let's get him! So the kids from the village returned and played in the garden. They were delightfully surprised by all the snow. And as they played, the giant's entire garden began to transform from winter into spring. The giant was right, and suddenly he wasn't feeling lonely anymore. Suddenly, I feel like sharing everything I have. I don't feel lonely anymore. And the giant lifted the boy up into the tree. But then the villagers showed up armed with pitchforks, hoes, spades, and brooms. Put that kid down, you monster, or we'll run you out of the village! Thank you, Mr. Giant. It's your garden now. This garden is open to all. The villagers put down their weapons and entered the garden, joining their children in play. Many years later, the giant grew old and feeble. And although he had lovely memories of the time the children played in his garden, he was sad and lonely again because they stopped coming. <sighs> I reckon they've all grown up, little Daisy. They've moved on with their lives. They never call. They never write. <sighs> then a young man came to the garden gates. He shouted to the giant. 
Hello, Mr. Giant. May I visit your lovely garden? The giant was delighted to have any visitor. So he waved at the young man and invited him in. The giant's old eyes widened with surprise. His wrinkled face drew a smile. The young man that stood before him was the small boy he befriended years ago. Please, don't get up, but I want you to meet someone. Someone who wanted to see the garden I played in as a child. My son. The young man shouts a name and a small boy that looked so much like the boy the giant remembered from years ago entered the garden. And so as the years went on, new children of the village played in the garden, and years after that, their own children would play in the garden too. Their youth kept it evergreen, long after the giant passed on. The giant wasn't remembered as mean and selfish. He was regarded as the giant who opened his heart and his garden to all those who seeked its company. The End